Are you a big fan of South Park? Do you like RPGs? Boom, there we go. What, too short? Okay, let's take it from the top. Although it's been out for quite a few months now, Ubisoft's profane RPG about the kids from that quiet mountain town has finally made its way onto the Nintendo Switch, so we've updated our review to incorporate our thoughts on the new portable version. The Coon and friends are in crisis. Civil war has broken out. Hero has turned against Hero. Just as they were on the cusp of securing a deal with Netflix to launch their money-making superhero franchise, an argument between the Coon and Mysterion over who gets to star in their own blockbuster movie has caused the once unified group to split into two factions. You want civil war? Is that what you want? Yeah, dude, civil war, you. Oh, you, get out of my house! And thus the stage is set for Ubisoft's sequel to 2014's Stick of Truth, the impressive, ludicrously authentic dozen or so hours long interactive episode of South Park that also happened to be a relatively competent RPG. With Fractured But Whole, Ubisoft is clearly looking to raise that bar from relatively competent to full-fledged. I'm happy to report that it seems like they've succeeded, minus a few shitty parts, literally. As the perpetual new kid, the very same new kid you played in the previous game, you join up with Cartman's coon and friends as a superhero of your very own. I'm sure viewers will be shocked to learn that you and your fellow superheroes soon become embroiled in a far-reaching, ever-twisting plot that involves dirty cops, strippers, raisins girls, and time travel. And that's all really just within the first few hours. Did I mention this is a South Park game? So, uh, do you identify as being cisgendered or transgendered? Ironically, the story overall plays out a lot like one of the more recent seasons of the television show. The crazy situations and set pieces are all memorable and funny enough on their own, even if the overarching plot gets a bit off the rails by the time it has to tie everything up at the end. Well, well, well. If it ain't a cisgendered boy. We don't take care to your types around here. It's all technically connected, sure. But you'll probably forget why you're fighting those strippers or trying to mix rat poop into that DJ's drink. But hey, damned if it isn't funny while you're doing it. Oh, I guess you want to do it the hard way. The big plus side to all of this is that what you're watching on screen is almost always indistinguishable from a regular episode of South Park. Sure, the animation style of the show definitely lends itself well to a video game, but the authentic look, sound, and feel of the whole thing really can't be overstated. Remember? As was the case in Stick, Fractured But Whole is a role-playing game at its heart. When you join the Coon and Friends, Cartman, the Coon's alter ego, walks you through the creation of your superhero by first selecting one of three classes. As you can probably guess, these all fit relatively standard RPG archetypes of fighter, caster, and rogue, only with a superhero twist as opposed to a fantasy one. A blaster with range powers like Cyclops. Cartman also kindly provides you with a tragic origin story, which doubles as a combat tutorial, and then you're basically turned loose in South Park to begin your quest. As you progress through the game, you build out your character by swapping out artifacts and DNA strand slots that boost combat techniques and passive abilities. It's all pretty standard stuff and not a very complex system. The game even gives you an overall grade for how powerful your current configuration of gear is. It does the trick, but it's not going to be why anyone wants to pay the price of admission here. Obviously, the biggest aesthetic change for this adventure, in comparison to Stick of Truth, is, as Cartman says, We're playing superheroes now and you guys are dorks. The superhero theme meshes perfectly with the fact that you're basically just a bunch of kids playing make-believe. At least at first. <laughs> the jumble of makeshift costumes and household items that make up your super gear is all remarkably endearing. Like, your first artifact is actually a fidget spinner. <laughs> this also means that you get to try on a lot of really silly makeshift costumes. Those costumes, by the way, are purely cosmetic. There's no stats involved. Actually, you know what? Bebe won't take a selfie with you if you don't have a good outfit, but other than that. Of course, throughout your adventure, your hero is usually accompanied by other members of the Coon and Friends. Again, at least at first. Your sizable roster of allies can be swapped in and out to suit your combat needs, or based on how funny you find them during a fight. Make way for Coon! Uh, speaking of fights, you'll be having a lot of those. Thankfully, Ubisoft San Francisco has clearly poured the majority of their time into making combat more nuanced than that in Stick. The turn-based JRPG combat from the last game has been given a few extra wrinkles of depth this time around, namely with the addition of a grid system. Your party and the enemy team are no longer on opposite sides of the battlefield like they're playing dodgeball. Now, all characters are free to move up, down, back, and forth on this grid each time their turn comes up, making a character's placement on the battlefield a crucial factor in determining what abilities they can and should be using. You cuties are such meanies! Having everyone be able to move to any spot 
means that combat is often about outmaneuvering your foes or simply just knocking them all around. Every ability in a hero's arsenal corresponds to a different area of effect on that grid. Some characters charge forwards in straight lines, knocking enemies into each other, while others cast large spells that affect entire Sudoku grids worth of squares. There are also quick time prompts that help charge a special ultimate ability or do a bit more damage, special fart powers that reverse time, you heard me right, microaggression punishes, and summoning items, just to name a few. You really put the fear of kites into me, shithead. All this to say, those that found the combat a little bare bones in the last game will probably welcome the added tactical elements here. Outside of combat and story sequences, you're usually free to wander around South Park, rummaging through people's houses for crafting materials, completing side quests, and of course, taking selfies with the townspeople. During your jaunts through town, you'll often see loot that's hidden in out of reach places. Loot which you can access using some Metroidvania style powers. Or your time reversing fart ability. Just, yeah, whatever, don't ask. Are you proud of yourself? What this means in practice is, you'll frequently have to come back once you've unlocked a special buddy team up power that allows you to fart your way to victory. Quite literally. Honestly though, these and other special quick time moments are some of the only frustrating bits. Not because the puzzles are difficult, but because you'll often find yourself held back by a button prompt that you're not quite getting or a weird quick time sequence. Ah! It's never really enough to induce rage quitting levels of frustration, but it's the only time when the illusion sort of breaks and what you're doing stops feeling fun or funny. The game really does maintain the ability to surprise and delight fans of the show remarkably well throughout the time that you're playing. It's just a shame that some of those moments are kind of ruined by a weird spin the thumbsticks game. Try again! Aside from these annoyances though, it really is in that downtime between major combat sequences that the real appeal of playing a South Park game shines through the most. The fact that every single inch of the game is wrapped in an authentic South Park skin is the extra boost that it needs to save it from being what would normally be considered a sort of been there done that kind of RPG. Though, again, much better than the first one. This is really not a knock against it, it just means that The Fractured Butthole is not a game that I'd recommend to anyone looking to just power through all the South Park stuff in order to experience the can't miss RPG that's underneath. It's actually sort of the opposite. If you're a major fan of South Park that isn't so keen on getting too bogged down in the nitty gritty RPG mechanics, I'm pretty confident that just lowering the difficulty, which you can do at any time, would allow you to laugh your way through with relative ease. And honestly, it'd be worth it too. The amount of stuff that's on offer for fans of the show here is truly impressive. Hey, Tom Brady, you wanna play the game or do you just wanna be known as a smug cheating bitch the rest of your life? We've now had a chance to play the PC and the Nintendo Switch version. And I'm sure you're gonna be shocked to learn that the PC version is the better looking of the two. Playing the Switch version in docked mode, we noticed some jaggies that were definitely not present in the Bigger Brother PC version. When playing in handheld mode, the Switch port also struggles a bit in the performance department. Frame rate dips and longer load times, even when you're just entering battle mode, were definitely noticeable. But honestly, handheld mode still seems like a nice fit for the game, and the experience is almost identical once you've played enough to stop noticing the tech limitations. There are no big Switch exclusive features though, so the version you want to pick up really just depends on where you want to be playing it. Getting back to the core game though, my last thought is that there are essentially two parts to this experience, so your enjoyment will hinge upon you appreciating both. On the one hand is an entire season's worth of genuinely hilarious South Park content, and on the other is an RPG that's just deep and fun enough to keep you invested and pushing forward. You're gonna have to be a fan of both to get the most out of it, but thankfully I know there's a lot of us out there. Or you're definitely going to hell now, get out of here! Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.